that they probably needed. So I felt that it was a need to provide services specifically for individuals that had behavior health issues and in that area in conjunction with substance abuse. That's basically how the idea of and the target area that we decided to go into. When I, uh, when I, when I would be aware of uh, providing services and linking in persons to the families to the various services, one of the things that I did see was uh, most of the time this, the behavior health issues became almost prevalent into why other things were happening, mm -hmm. why they were homeless, why they were about to be homeless, why they were on substance abuse, and those kind of things. So we decided, we being myself and my business partner, Mary Fogger Ryan, who at that time was um, the person that was handling the bookkeeping and the finance in, uh, at the homeless center. So the idea came and said, I went to Mary one day, to be honest, went to her one day and said, what do you think about this? What do you think uh, the possibility of something like this could help? Because our function was to try to see what we could do to help individuals. Mm -hmm. So she thought it was a good idea. And from that point, I guess probably within uh, a couple of weeks from that, we actually considered moving the business uh, forward and starting the business at that point. And uh, you were sharing with me that the business um, didn't necessarily start off slow either because you had already become aware of the fact that this was a niche uh, that was, uh, uh, though others are doing it, that it was a niche uh, that really and truly needed more in terms of um, more opportunities for people who were in need of this type of service. Uh, because one of the things I mentioned to you was that I had Chet Bell on uh, with Stuart Marchman Act, and um, they do some related types of things. Explain the difference between uh, the persons, well, number one, what types of individuals uh, is it that you guys provide service to? Uh, what type of service do you provide? And, uh, and then the difference between maybe uh, what they provide and what you provide in terms of service. Okay, thank you. Uh, our primary objective is to provide a, an alternative approach to individualized case management and to empower the individual towards self-sufficiency. What I'm talking about that that a lot of agencies in this area, when it comes to substance abuse and mental health, have very compo various components. Our objective was to specialize in one particular area and become good at it. And I thought, uh, after looking at the services, we felt that targeted case management would be the main focus that we could provide a better service and link the persons to the various service, and I thought that would be needed more so than any particular service. The, uh, the area of target case management, we feel, is a little different in that we have certain components that we look at and that, that we try to serve in the client. One would be to assess the person's needs. We would take the individual and find out where they are in the community, what their needs are when it comes to, in relationship to behavior health issues. Another area would be to educate the community or educate the client. Mm -hmm. In several cases, uh, the client may not know. They, they have a diagnosis of uh, bipolar, schizophrenia. Well, a lot of times, those areas that are diagnosed become labels. Mm -hmm. And our objective was yes. not to take, away, to take away that label and let it remain in itself and deal with the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. The other part of that was that everyone was an individual. I, I could see when the, once that person had that diagnosis, and then that diagnosis become a label. Mm -hmm. Now you just grouping everybody with the same things, and everybody you assume would have the same issues, and you had the same results if you provided the same structure and provided the services. Unfortunately, people are not like that. Everybody is an individual, right? And that's where we came up. A lot of times you hear a cliche about every person wants to be a, have an individualized program. That's not a cliche for us. That's actually how we operate. Every client that we have specifically gets care for based on their particular situation. So you have the individual case management approach that will empower the individual to whatever level of self efficiency. Mm -hmm. In some cases you get individuals who may uh, have in, uh, challenges with their uh, living skills. Mm -hmm. So how much can you do for that person? You have some individuals that may have uh, a, a diagnosis of a bipolar, schizophrenia, but where or what can you do, how can you help that person to obtain some level of self-sufficiency? So now you have to educate the client. Once that's done, you may want to educate the client on the various treatment options. Mm -hmm. You may want to educate the family or the support system.
that they have on that because we're finding out because we do service children we're finding out that a lot of times the support system that's in place for either kids or adults they may not know fully aware of what the diagnosis is all about there's another component of that dealing with the medication how many persons know what the medication does mm -hmm. what's the side effects so the education process involves basically dealing with all the aspects with the client the support system and in some cases the community itself the other part with that was now we got them educated how we're going to link them to the very service so that's another component that we do link the person on the individual basis to whatever services they need uh, then you got to coordinate these activities uh, being an individual um, may not know how to deal with that we deal with individuals as young as children as young as six years old mm. of course they can't do a whole lot okay? mm -hmm. uh, but they have a support system in place but that's that support system may not know how where what to do and how that's coordinated that's where we come in as well to, to assist the families or assist the, the support system and uh, coordinate activities for the client another component would be and I think really really strong is an advocacy the advocating for the client is crucial because you'll find in several cases where individuals take for instance you get a person in foster care all of a sudden now you get a kid that's been there in foster care for four to five years he's 18 years old boom the system says he's an adult mm -hmm. but if he's been in the system where he's never had any opportunity to really learn how to handle things independently who's going to be there for him advocate is crucial it's critical when you're talking about trying to get some assistance with someone who may not have the opportunity to develop those skills necessary to do that. And last but not least, I think, um, well, I won't say last, but one of the other components probably would be to monitor those services mm -hmm. and make sure that they are done and coordinated right. So you look at those components. And, and one of the things that you stress with me, which I stress, you heard in my opening, I stress as well, is empowerment. You're talking about empowering an individual so that they can become self-sufficient so that they can reach a certain, whatever that level is for them, because I'm sure it varies depending upon the individual and whatever issues they have that they're dealing with. Uh, but you want to prepare them so that they are able to go out into society and really be able to not just take care of themselves, but also fend for themselves. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's the empowerment is why we are existing. The, the, like you mentioned from the beginning, the ESP actually stands for Empowerment Service Advisor. And I had to let some person know that as a disclaimer, it's not ESP being extra sensory perception. <laughs> you know, we can't figure things out that we don't mm -hmm. know pretty much. But our goal is to actually get that individual to whatever level that self-sufficiency may be. If an individual, say for instance, has a challenge where just uh, living skills, that may be something that may seem small to some most individuals, but if you have a behavioral health issue, that could really hamper you as far as what you could possibly do and whatever level of self-sufficiency you can obtain. Mm -hmm. So you want to empower the person. You don't just want to do everything for them. You want to engage the person, but you don't want to enable the person. Mm -hmm. So that those are the things that we look at when, we, when we're trying to provide the service uh, total for the, for the client. And what is so good about this, and I know, um, you know, you, I'm sure you've heard this because you've been a part of the social service system, as, as have I. Uh, where people always say that the uh, social service programs really just want to maintain their existence and the way you do that is that you make people dependent on you, on your agency, on what, what it is that you do as opposed to uh, getting that person to a point where they can actually depend more on themselves, uh, where they don't have to have someone constantly taking them by the hand and taking them here, taking them there telling them what to think, telling them what to eat, telling them what to this, that, and the other. Uh, as opposed to that, it sounds like what your agency does in working with each individual case is that you work with them to get them again to that level of self-sufficiency, uh, but you don't leave them hanging. You also continually check on them to make sure that whatever that plateau is that they need to reach at any given point, uh, that they've reached that, and then there's a new plateau and, and so they keep going until they're at the highest plateau that they can reach, you know. Exactly. And then, then you're able to spend less time and kind of wean your way away from them, just kind of like a, a parent would do in actuality, even though I know you're not their parents. But, um, you know, the, the world that we live in today, and I'm sure there are people who are listening saying, God, that seems like a lot to be doing for somebody, goodness gracious. 
Uh, but in the world we're living in today, uh, fewer and fewer people 